Hello, gentle marketers. Welcome to episode 39 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on empathy and kindness. I'm Sarah Zanacroce, I'm the host here, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business, or you are an entrepreneur who is simply tired and sick of the traditional marketing model and are ready for a paradigm shift. And you also might be a marketing impact pioneer, so someone who's working for an organization, small or large, who does business for good. So maybe you have already a B Corp label or you're just otherwise a uh, part of the good guys, those who uh, believe in profit and purpose. Real quick, before we begin, if you're new to this show, yay, thank you so much for being here. A big welcome. I'm so happy you're here. This podcast is structured around the seven P's of the gentle marketing mandala. So I always try to find conversations that fit into one of the P's, and those are passion, personal power, people, pricing, promotion, and partnership. So seeing my one-page gentle marketing plan with the seven email prompts might help you understand a bit better what we're talking about here on this show. And yes, it's a uh, prompt to opt in and give me your email. You know how this spiel works. You can get your one-page marketing plan at sarasinacroce.com forward slash one page, the number one page. So today's solo episode falls under the P of pricing. And sometimes I also refer to it as profit because Both of them have to do with money. So in this episode, I wanted to share a recent experience I had around pricing and talking about money with a potential customer. So a previous podcast guest referred me to a friend of his. And as it often happens with good referrals, we immediately connected because we both had similar values and worldviews. So yay, I could already see myself working with this client. So on the Zoom call, I invited him to share about his needs and expectations. Like I always do, I let uh, the, the client or the potential client talk first. And so he told me what he was looking for and he needed help with his LinkedIn profile. He had recently transitioned into a new business and hadn't updated his profile in a long time because in the previous business, he didn't really need it. So uh, yeah, that that is something that I knew that I can help him with. So I gave him some encouragement and a few tips on how to improve what he already had. And we talked about 20 minutes or so. And then he asked me about my offers. So I mentioned two options. Uh, I have a do it for you version. So that's where I create the content for the client. I write the whole LinkedIn profile from A to Z. And that's my high level offer. And it's quite an investment. I actually uh, admit that I kept raising the price because uh, A, I really think it has that value. And, And B, it takes me a lot of time to write those profiles the way I do them. It really is um, more than than just a profile. It's it's a personal brand and it takes me anywhere between eight and 12 hours if I write it. And and I have, you know, 10 years of experience and lo- lots of um, experience writing these profiles. So, so yeah, I just realized that uh, if I do everything for the client, I wanted to be paid fair money for that. And so I kept raising the the price because I felt uh, like I was overwhelmed with the demand and uh, and then kind of, you know, having to put in a lot of hours for for something that I kind of felt frustrated with after a bit because um, I, I just didn't feel like my time was valued. 
So that's my high-end offer. But then I also told them uh, that I have another option where the client gets access to my LinkedIn profile tutorial that helps them write their profile on their own. And once they have a draft, we get an hour together to review it. And I also address any other LinkedIn questions that they might have. And they really walk away with a really good, solid LinkedIn profile. But the work is on their side. So it takes work that they need to be ready to uh, invest themselves. And many clients actually tell me they prefer that option. Um, and I also often recommend it for entrepreneurs because it requires some deep thinking about who you are, who you serve, what you offer, uh, etc. So, so often times they do that reflection and my videos help them reflect on these things. And then they apply some of what they learned uh, for their LinkedIn profile also for uh, their about page or their services page. So it's time well worth uh, investing. My rate for this package is $500. So yeah, if you think about it, you get one hour and it's five hundred dollars. So it's not it's not cheap, and and I just want to share a bit how I came up with this rate and and why I I charge that rate. Um, again, this is not um, if you've been here, uh, I have listened to previous episodes. This is not you know kind of this uh, bragging thing where I say I deserve this rate and and all of that. No, I I, I really just want to explain how I came to be charging that amount. And then also in this later, um, talk about having these conversations with clients. So that's where I'm coming from. So the reason I charge this rate is that I really truly stand behind the value that client gets and the clients get. It, um, they get a very unique LinkedIn profile that represents their brand. And my rate also reflects my experience. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, of course, this wasn't always my price when I first started out. Uh, I think I was like doing profile reviews, not one-on-one, -on -one, but but like video reviews, I think I started at $97. So clearly, you know, this is a, a, a journey. So um, my rate also reflects my creative thinking. I, I really take a holistic approach to someone's LinkedIn profile. It's not just a profile for me. It's a personal brand. Clients who work with me also get coaching on on services, niching, other marketing advice, we always also look at their website because LinkedIn is just one part of their brand. And and I know that and, and maybe compared to other LinkedIn experts, I have, you know, a, a, an in-depth ex experience uh, coming from marketing in general. So um, that's another reason. And then I also really want to give freely without feeling that I don't get paid fairly. So besides the one hour the client gets with me, I always invite them to share their profile again once they made the updates after and uh, I reviewed it. And then we'll I'll look at the profile again and make a small short video and add some uh, additional thoughts. And, and of course, I'm also available to them um, if they have any follow-up questions and, and I, you know, I, I always did that because I'm very much a believer of giving, but when I did that with lower rates, I kind of felt like they're taking advantage of me. And then I felt like I have to defend myself that I need to charge for this extra time. So I just really didn't want to deal with that anymore. And I wanted to say, yes, you can, you know, ask me uh, as many questions and, and, and I don't feel bad if we go over the one hour. So, um, that just really feels good now. So my offer then also comes with non-physical benefits. Um, what I mean by that is, is, for example, increased confidence. Because when you have a LinkedIn profile, actually, let me say it this way. I, I'm an introvert, right? So I'm not so good at tooting my own horn, just, just kind of talking about rates and, and, you know, how good I am and all of that. That makes me really uncomfortable. But I'm really good at, at, 
putting other people in the spotlight. And so often when I work with clients and their LinkedIn profile is kind of like, eh, you know, uh, all these, it, it's just kind of like average. And then when I work with people, they tell me, oh, I also got this award, but I didn't want to put it on. <laughs> and so what, what my job is, is really put people into the spotlight, spotlight and, and sell them. So uh, one of those side benefits is, is also increased confidence because they can then really own their expertise. And I tell them, no, you have to, you have to say that and you don't have to keep bragging about it, but it's there on your LinkedIn profile. And, and I often refer to that also as your sales page. So, um, that that's kind of one of my superpowers as well is put other people in the spotlight. Um, and then, my rate also includes all uh, kind of other admin costs, such as the Kajabi membership where the t- tutorial is hosted, any admin time for my accountant, you know, all these little fees for my shopping cart, et cetera, et cetera. So if you do the math, um, also time it takes to, to write the invoice. So if you do the math, there's all these little costs that add up. And, um, you know, if you're really underselling yourself and you have a, a, an hourly rate or, or whatever a, a rate that is just too low, then, then you're really not making a profit. So I didn't tell the client all of that. I just mentioned my my second package, which is the the one I just told you about, the five hundred dollars, the the that gets them access to the t- tutorial, and then the the time with me. I also then mentioned my third option, which is just the tutorial, and that's one hundred and ninety seven. If people just want to do it themselves, so I I give them options and. Um, and that really empowers the client to choose and, and pick what feels good to them. And so when I mentioned the price for the middle package, um, he answered that it was kind of more than he was planning to spend. And he said he didn't want to challenge me on the price, but asked if we could have a, have a conversation about it. And yeah, I said, of course, I, I love that. I mean, we're, we're adults and, and, and we need to be able to talk about money. So he asked if he could just pay me for one hour of my time. And that happens quite a lot, quite frequently. And yes, in the, a few years ago, I, I would still offer that, but I no longer do um, because I, I really find that it's not a sustainable way of doing business because as I mentioned before, it's never just an hour. The email exchanges before and after, um, the writing the invoice, sending a recording, et cetera, et cetera. So for every hour, there is at least 30 minutes of admin involved. So so I told him, no, unfortunately, uh, I don't offer hourly. I then offered that he can think about it and, and let me know what would be a fair price to him. And I really meant that. I'm I'm all for packages. It, it makes things simpler for me. It's all on the website. People can see that you know it, it's there, and that's the, the the official offer. But then, and and maybe some people don't agree with that. But I'm also for making exceptions when my gut tells me to. So I don't want to put someone into a difficult financial situation. So I believe that if people can afford my full rate then I feel like I deserve that full rate. But, you know, sometimes it just, it, it can't be done. And so uh, that's why I offered in this case to, to um, yeah, come up with a price that seemed fair to him. And we left it at that, that he would think about it and, and get back to me. And yes, he ended up buying the package a few days later at the full price and and then after our collaboration, he told me that he was delighted and really happy with the with the LinkedIn profile. So this is like a long intro to what I was really um, wanting to talk about is is that when it comes to having pricing conversations with which obviously means we need to talk about money, I've learned that it's best to really 
um, kind of put away your ego, leave it out of the game and, and, and don't take it personally. Don't get annoyed if someone challenges you on your price because it really has nothing to do with you. Um, it just means that maybe, um, it's up to you to show empathy for the person's situation because money is something that is just not equal for everybody. I mean, the, Everybody has a different um, relationship towards money, but also has different amounts of money that they have available. So I think it's just, I've learned that it, it it's best to leave the ego out of the way. And I, I've learned the hard way. I mean, um, this wasn't um, an easy thing for me to, to learn because um, I've shared before that I went through this um, underselling um, kind of time where I always try to give the lowest rate possible just because that's kind of how I've been raised. You, you have to be humble and, and so on. But then that left me being very frustrated and o- almost angry and not loving m- what I do anymore. So um, again, if you can get to that place where you just say, this is not about me, this is not about how I, you know, people feel about my value. Uh, let's just be adults and have a conversation around money. Um, I also like this concept of non-grasping. So if your client feels that you're really desperate to make the sale, uh, it puts them in an uncomfortable position and, and there's a good chance that they'll probably not feel like buying. So, really don't get attached to the outcome, have the conversation. And if it feels good to the potential client, then it's meant to be. And if it's not meant to be, then there's other solutions. I'm also sometimes uh, even open to, you know, to say, look, um, this is my price, um, but I'd be happy to introduce you to someone else who is kind of new, newer in, in, the, in the business and, and they'd be happy to work with you. So kind of apply this non-grasping and sometimes, sometimes it works and then other times you just really wish you could have that client and then it's, it's a bit more difficult. Um, be open and flexible if your gut tells you so. Um, but don't feel like you have to. Uh, I think that also has to do with boundaries. So if it feels good to me, I will say, look, I'm flexible. Uh, tell me what feels good to you. But if I don't have this good vibe, then I don't feel like I have to. These are my prices. This is my business. And, uh, you know, if you don't like it, um, please look somewhere else. But in other cases where I just I can just tell this is my ideal client, I want this to work, I want this to work for him, then, uh, you know, there are no rules. It's only your rules. Um, again, apply boundaries when needed. So um, for me, the, the boundary about not doing hourly is very, very clear. I also don't do exchanges. I used to do that in the beginning as well. And I I still, I have this love-hate relationship with it. So the idea is to uh, say, you know, I offer you uh, my LinkedIn profile uh, review and you offer me one of your services uh, in return. Um, I've unfortunately only ever had bad experiences with that. So um, it's probably just me. I don't know. I, I, I would love to hear that this works for me it just never did and and so I'd rather pay the person and they pay me and then you know we still have this money being exchanged I think in a way it's important to say there is a money exchange because then we we know that this is business and and what we're doing is valuable and it's worth paying for um and then the the last thing I would say is understand that everyone has insecurities around money so it's yeah it's so normal to feel awkward talking about money feel awkward kind of you know saying that what you stand for and this is my hourly rate that's awkward to me when I can tell that the other person maybe can't afford it and for the other person it's probably awkward to say well I can't afford that so just 
you know, bring a lot of empathy to that conversation and, and, and make it as human as possible and just say, look, uh, we know that, can we just talk about this openly? This is how I feel. So I really also believe uh, giving your client options so that they feel empowered to make a choice. So I always like to give at least two different options for different budgets, uh, sometimes uh, three if you have it. And Yes, of course, you'll have some conversations that don't lead to a sale because none of the options work for your client and, and that's okay too. What matters is that you are able to hold the space for this conversation. Again, you are the business owner, so it is your responsibility to be able to show up and, and talk about money and you know tell them what your price is and then uh, kind of also be open to have a conversation around it which is is not easy and I know that so that's what I um wanted to share with you in this episode about having kind of difficult conversations around around money with uh, you know regarding to pricing and your packages and your your services so I I hope some of it has been helpful um, again there's there's things in there that maybe you don't agree and and that's fine you need to find what works for you and what you feel comfortable with so these are also some kind of um conversations that we have in the gentle business circle so if you're interested in having these kind of really honest transparent conversations uh, check out if the uh, gentle business circle would be for you it's basically a monthly call where we get together with fellow gentle marketers and if you can't make it live, you uh, can also submit your questions in advance. But yeah, we discuss anything that comes up for you, uh, be it around pricing, be it about marketing, uh, be it about life. Um, we just hold the space for these conversations that help us evolve in, in our businesses and create sustainable businesses. I'm trying to get this off the ground starting in June. And you can find all the details at sarasanacroce.com forward slash circle so again it's a it's a monthly call and uh, all the details are on that page i hope you'll join me on this journey to a kinder marketing paradigm please invite your friends if you feel like sharing it with them and you can also uh, share the gentle business manifesto with them both can be found at the gentle business let's be the change we want to see in the world talk to you soon